Hola amigos, it's Richie Rich back yet again and in this video I'm going to be dropping another of my classic reviews as I've done back in the day and in this one we are going to be doing the Arsenio Hall show from 989 all the way to 994. Be sure to check this out. So yeah boy, yeah it's been a while since I've been doing these uh, reviews, you know, and I just want to thank um, the many, many uh, members of the team, you know, who have followed like my reviews that I've been doing from back in the day, from like the Hanging with Mr. Cooper ones, the um, Martin review and the French Prince of LA reviews, you know, so seeing as now I've got so much time and I'm free at last, free at last, you know, I want to jump back to some reviews and get this ball rolling and get them back up you know so yes the Arsenio Hall show you know which lasted for about five to, uh, I believe it was five seasons six seasons six seasons 1989 to 1994 I believe like for me and I'm pretty sure a lot of others who you know are you know roughly you know 90s babies you know um our senior hall like um, was uh, he solidified like the nineties era from like the fashion, um, the music at that time, um, just entertainment in general. Anything that was hot during that nineties era, you know, late eighties to early nineties, our senior hall was definitely a pragmatic figure, you know, and it was really it was really nice because as I talked about those other review reviews. You know, they were all gelled at the same time, you know what I mean? So many of those like 90s sitcoms, especially like the black ones, because you know, our senior hall generated to a black audience, you know, they were all kind of intertwined and intermixed, you know, during those during that 90s kind of hot period for these black TV sitcoms. And I consider our senior hall um a big factor of all these like 90s um you know sitcoms that in the black sitcoms because you know i'll go on to it a bit later like living single for instance you know um they the first time the actresses were introduced you know they appeared on the arsenio hall show for the first time you know so it was such like a uh, a launching pad for a lot of like the upcoming black um superstars of the 90s i feel like it's apropos espanol term that I'm doing this review now, you know, because we're just around the time that um, the one of the greatest uh, movies from the late 80s and one of the most funniest movies ever coming to America, the sequel just got released like last week, you know, so um, our senior Juan Eddie Murphy reunited to bring that magic that they brought from the um, 80s period 30 years later, you know, I haven't seen the film yet, please no one spoil it for me. To America came out in 88 and what I found out is that um, Arsenio Hall was getting contacted by the network at the time, which was Fox, you know, and it's like he was in talks to kind of be the new uh, late night show host, you know, before him, there was, um, uh, you know, legendary comedian, uh, John Rivers, you know, who had her talk shows and she was always that kind of a presenter on those kind of like celebrity big um, ceremonies or award shows, you know, John Rivers and that, you know, so Arsenio Hall was next in line to get his own talk show, you know, and he'd been working as a stand-up comedian alongside, like, the greats, like, the uh, the, the Wayne brothers, you know, the older ones, Keenan Ivory Williams, Robert Townsend, of course, Eddie Murphy was there, you know, and Arsenio, you know, so a few of those comedians were there on the stand-up circuits, you know, and Arsenio Hall was one of the noble ones to get this kind of avenue to do this late night talk show. The pilot of our senior hall show and coming to America were just set like one year apart, you know. So imagine our senior hall got all this kind of notoriety and popularity from the coming to America because it was such a, uh, it was such a hit. And Eddie Murphy was killing it with like coming to America, you know, coming to America and Beverly Hills Cop, Forty Eight Hours. These were like nationwide hits. So for our senior hall to be tagged on this and to be getting that 
late night talk show it just showed our Sydney Hall's career was already made his demographic who you know his audience that he wanted to attract was the you know demographic from like an 18 year old to like a 35 which would later be dubbed like the MTV generation you know um, this was like the new gen of like um, late 80s to 90s of like you know the music um, the flavor you know new jack swing you know the R&B music you know all was going to be fitting within the late night senior hall show and it, this really really benefited him specifically because at that time years later but before that it was just a Johnny Carson and you know the one he replaced John Rivers you know and with all due respect they really just attracted like the suburban you know the white you know picket fence you know what I mean this it was that but when the 90s came and it's like you know you know Michael Jackson remember the time you know you had the baby face and you had the the up you know rising of the rap music you know this is all what our senior hall was focusing presenting on his late night show yeah precisely. and from early on he was able to capture like the urban audience you know as i said he was one of the few um probably if only at the time to put like uh rap stars you know rap really rose to prominence like in the age of like the run dmc the LL Cool J's shipped into the 90s when you had like a nice cube of Tupac Shakur and Way by Nature. Arsenio Hall gave them Arsenio Hall gave them a like, platform to do these musical um like uh, performances on their show, you know, and it was cool because at that time you have to remember in the early 90s it was still segregated, you know, there was the Rodney King beatings and there was the OJ Simpson's case. So there was still a divide of like black people on this side and white people on this side. So it was such a cultural influence for like our senior hall being like, you know, and it is like I said, he, he gave this platform to like these black, um, you know, music superstars, you know, but it was also kind of generated to like, you know, the ethnic minority as well, you know, George Lopez, you know, a famous stand up comedian, he appeared, he's actually good friends with our senior hall. He appeared on the show as well, you know, much like kind of like the ethnic um, minorities who would not appear on a Johnny Carson or like a Moy Downey show or like a Patrick Jack show, you know what I mean? It was like, um, it was tailored mainly for our senior hall. Those episodes when you see like um, Tupac Shakur is such like a, you know, legendary like figure, you know, to see those interviews that he was only on the Arsenio Hall show you know, for someone who has skin color like me to see those two like superstars you know or even when spike lee appeared on the show due to like the, the success of like you know the arsenio hall show like he arsenio hall really crossed over to like pop culture because you know there's some even today you have some like late night talk show host you know i ain't gonna name names <laughs> seth myers you know who really don't have that kind of crossover appeal arsenio hall I mean, at the time, you know, because of his popularity, he hosted like the MTV Awards, you know, I believe it was the Music Awards, you know what I mean? But that same kind of his fashion, his personality, it got over with the crowd at that time, you know? So when Wesley Snipes comes to um, promote his new movie, Passenger 57, and there's a scene in that movie, Passenger 57, where Wesley Snipes is with, is sitting alongside um, an elderly white woman, and they're about to, you know, fly. And she confuses him, confuses Wesley Snipes' character for um, Arsenio Hall, and she starts doing that woof, 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 woof theme the audience members did to cheer on Arsenio Hall. You know? Speaking of like culture, pop culture, like, um, I don't know if anyone's ever done this, but like, um, Jason Voorhees, you know, the Friday the 13th, uh, <laughs> you know, in the Goldie Master serial killer, you know, he appears in um, the Arsenio Hall show. You know as a sketch you know one of the most entertaining sketches and the first and the best thing is jason Voorhees doesn't say a word you know and it was the actual actor who portrayed him kane hodder who was on his show you know it, it's just stuff like that it's just thinking outside the box you know because you would never see that in the other talk shows um at that time you know what i mean like a movie villain you know it's like if darth vader appeared on like um Jimmy Fallon, you know what I mean, as an actual guest, you know, uh, uh, something. And I believe Arsenio who at that time, he probably was just so confident, you know, like his show was the place to be, you know, that he could afford to do, um, take a risk, like put like a Jason Voorhees and even alongside he put like wrestlers at that time, you know, and 
um wrestlers wrestling really boomed at you know the night it not too much when the show was on it boomed like after like the late 90s you know with the attitude era and the uh nwo and wcw but like um he was really showcasing like the you know the ultimate warrior macho man randy savage oh yeah you know the hulk hogan's the ruddy ruddy pipers kind of like um from what i got he was so confident in his show he could kind of put what he wanted to do and know that he enjoyed um interviewing them and he knew that the mtv generation could grab a you know latch onto it you know and it was really strong especially for the first couple of seasons because i was always loved like arsenio who is who had a fashion sense you know you see if you see david lemon and jay leno typical suit here comes a certain way you know the same shoes from river island that's all i could think of you know but arsenio who was like loud you know jackets he could wear a suit, you know, different color suits, you know, and it was just, it was like a walking fashion statement, you know, it's like you had to keep his eye, keep your eyes on him when you would watch the show, you know, you were interested in the guests, but you really were interested, you were also interested in Arsenio, how he's like banter with the guests, you know, and, um, you know, the music performances, there was a time like, um, you know, when MTV was at its height, you know, even BH1, uh, but, you know, those, um, uh, music performances in the 90s and the ones that were on there. I'm not just saying our senior hall show, but like the way they used to do the music performances at the time, it used to be like a uh, a movie premiere, you know what I mean? Or like a big, big kind of um, big budget trailer, you know? Um, I remember like one of my, one of my favorite ones, um, I like watching the show is the um, uh, <laughs> Tony Braxton and Babyface, you know, if you check that online, you know, this is the you know you'll find out that a lot of the music performances because again they weren't getting put on like the other like you know caucasian uh shows you know tony braxton that was like her first appearance when um babyface you know the soundtrack for boomerang you know um that was like the first time tlc you know they appeared on the arsenal hall show you know that was the first time you know like being shown to the world you know so he was very synonymous with like putting these like um young uh black you know not even just black urban music stars you know and they got a breakthrough from it you know arsenio who um this goes on to this line arsenio who was very popular but arsenio who clashed with some few stars you know uh most notably the first one is uh vanilla ice you know the most notable like um rappers who crossed over to mainstream you know because he was like a white version of mc hammer you know like blew up with like the ice ice baby soundtrack so when when it was time for vanilla ice to come on the arsenio hall show he got caught flag you know because arsenio hall was bringing on these black guests all the time like cool mo d big daddy kane you know rakim you know eric and rakim you know so like now this white rapper who because traditionally the rap game was black that's where it originated that's where it started anyone who else is like a guest in hip-hop so for Vanilla Ice to come and get all this rap, all this fanfare for something that was predominantly black, it pissed Arsenio Hall off, you know. And you could see immediately um, in that uh, one of the one of the like uh, most noble um, episodes of the Arsenio Hall show is like uh, Vanilla Ice starts off doing his musical performance, and Arsenio Hall is introducing him like this is. He'll be like, "This is Vanilla Ice," and he looks at his record and he's just like lame when they actually sit down and he interviewed him um it was i remember like <laughs> vanilla ice brings out flavor flavor who was in the audience and the arsenio hall show to kind of have like that black protector you know and arsenio hall said no 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 send flavor Flav back up there you know what i mean i'm here to speak to you and that you know and arsenio hall really dug you know he really went into him you know talked about like you know the lies he talks about like being from the streets you know that he kind of let his ego get to the head saying like he was better than mc hammer but it was it was the first time there he was like arsenio really really attacked one of the guests you know and i can honestly don't blame him because you know it must have been really hard to get these kind of black musical uh guests or like performances on that show because as i said in the early 90s um even to the late 90s um at that time it was still racially segregated hey, you know so Arsenio Hall, from what I got from that, I felt he was standing up for who he resents, you know, because even though it was a show for a nationwide, it still was a black 
show you know what i mean similar like how like a fresh prince or mine is still a black show core of it you know so um it was nice you stood up on it and what i didn't know is um i just found it recently vanilla ice actually appeared the second time to do his um i think it was his next single you know and you could still see the tension you know and the animosity in the air you know what i mean but um he still was professional no you know even though vanilla ice was he didn't really seem like as a you know a rapper rapper you know um he was still professional to kind of put someone who was hot and and the second one most noble music is uh you know, a clash of was uh, Milli Vanilli, you know, Rob and Fab, you know, before um, it got, um, you know, the t you know, they discovered that like they were lip syncing. Um, Arsenio who was saying it on his show for maybe like a month before that, you know, making jokes like, you know, ooh, 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 you are through, you know, even before he was like saying like, um, these lot can't sing, but just in a jokey format because he knew people in that industry. It's Hollywood, you know what I mean? They go to the same dinners, same parties, you know what I mean? They um, probably you know go to the same like kind of designer stores to get you know the clothes you know that everyone is in that circle so they know each other so when he was saying that like you know Millie Vanilli like I said they would watch this show you know and they would also watch In Living Color you know because it was main like primetime show you know so what I found out is like what <laughs> he met he alluded that Rob God rest his soul actually went to the studio you know way to like whoop our senior hall's ass you know what I mean because um you know, um, you know, from what I watched the Millie Vanilli, they were so protective or not to let this kind of secret slip out. You know what I'm saying? You know, and uh, I said, who didn't care? You know, he would, you know, insult them. You know, he was very kind of, um, you know, um, not worried about what, uh, you know, the repercussions of like his jokes, you know, and, and I've got to be careful when I'm saying this. The, um, I'd say like the LBGT community um, now they came they actually stormed onto the Arsenio Hall show you know you know titled the Q U E E R Nation you know they came and they confronted Arsenio while he was in the midst I believe um, the guy the actor from Crocodile Dundee um, Hogan um, they were about to put him he was about to be the next guest you know and they were standing in his audience and they were saying like why don't you put more you know homosexual guests and I am totally in agreement with what Senior Hall saying because for two things. One, you don't, how does he know the, the, the guest sexuality? You know, some of them, even though it's on it, some of them is probably interviewing them and getting to know them for the first time. You know, so for them to just be like, well, we need to kind of just put more uh, gay guests, it's kind of stupid because you don't know the sexuality. You know, Arsenio Hall interviews him, he's not hanging out with all of them. You know what I'm saying? And the second thing which he was rightfully saying is they would have never done that on the Johnny Carson show, Moy Downey's show, any of them other like kind of a circus that they weren't black, they would have never gone to that show. They believed they could go to Arsenio Hall show and do that because of the skin colour. You know, it's a minority, like you know, you should be just lucky to have a show, you know what I mean? So again, what I was saying before to bring, you know, the brother down you know and um he, he, man i believe he handled it in the best way he can you know he kept his professionalism and he also stood up for what was right you know and you gotta keep you gotta give like mad props to our senior hall for that you know what i mean because um you know i can imagine how tough it is to do that show it's like so around like 983 so like um this would be like the third fourth season of like his show you know the ratings started to decline you know, and it was mainly because of the, you know, the success of like, um, you know, David Letterman and, you know, Jay Leno, you know, were both roughly on the same time as Arsenio. And um, they actually moved Arsenio Hall's time slot to lower so they could put David Letterman, you know, in that prime time slot, you know. And it just felt as Arsenio Hall's show started to drag on, he started to not get as much as the major the guest. You know, they were going into David Letterman or Jay Leno, you know, because when he when he first got on, you know, he had his like friends, you know, like Eddie Murphy, you know, MC Hammer, you know, um, Sinbad, you know, the comedian, you know, that those ones that came, but those like major ones like uh, Tom Cruise, you know, Johnny Depp, 
you speech with actress like a Julia Roberts, you know, they were mainly getting booked from David Lehman or Jay Leno. So for the original um, Arsenio Hall show, I, Richie Rich is going to give the original Arsenio Hall show a 4 out of 5. The reason um, I give it a 4 out of 5 um, simply because like it's an, it's an iconic show. Um, I only wish it had gone to the lengths of like a Letterman and uh, Jay Leno, you know, because I feel like it was hot, but it was cut so short, you know, and I feel again because of the change in music and you know the change of like um the com the competitive nature of these other late night shows, you know, our senior hall wasn't able to hang, you know, like booking the stars like of like you know Louis Farrakhan, you know, and it's like um it automatically like you know what I mean it just gave this kind of like stars would now start to go to Lemon or Jay Leno you know and I just believe if it had a span of Lemon because Lemon went from like 90s all the way to 2000s you know same as you know Leno you know Jay Leno really started to start rise you know so he needed to put like shows that could definitely compete with those two big heavyweights yes guys that's my uh, TV uh, review of the Arsenio Hall show let me know your thoughts um, about the Arsenio Hall show. You can even talk about Arsenio Hall as a, like an actor, comedian in general. Drop it down in the comments section. But yes, um, if you want me, if you like these reviews, if you want me to do more, um, I do have a Patreon, you know, which um, it will be really cool to make a donation so I can get more of these reviews. You know, as I said, like, um, you know, I got a microphone. I really want to take these reviews more seriously and, um, do more once and can you know every other like kind of week you know and it's like um it does sometimes take time to do the research you know and you know before i used to order dvds but you know i'm here now so it'd be really cool if, if, if there's any donations you can make just you know go simply to my patreon i explain it all there you know join the rich team there guys and stay tuned for more upcoming reviews which trust me which will be coming very very soon and always remember that she came to me. Ooh, 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 ooh.